Thank you so much for joining us. I have Lucere with me today, and we're going to be talking about how easy digital transformation and AI and all of that stuff is. But before I dive into the questions that I have for you, can you give everybody a quick introduction? Sure, Emma, and thank you for having me here. Um, I'm Lester Rindom. I uh, am the Chief Digital Officer at Baker Tilly Denmark, which means that I am responsible for our digital offerings to our SMB customers in, in the Danish market, as well as uh, a part of the global group of, of digital practitioners within Baker Tilly, which is, I think, the 10th largest uh, advisory and accounting firm in the world. Mm -hmm. So so the the uh, the volume is always, you know, focusing Danish, focusing global. We can do both ways, right? Uh, before that, I was the... Uh, I've been a consultant within automation and management consulting before, but I've also just uh, before joining Baker Tilly, I was the technology manager for automation at ISS uh, globally, so where I was the product, product owner for RPA. So I've been working a lot in the automation space pri previously as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. So like I said, we're going to be talking about how easy it is to bring these new technologies into an organization. So to get us started, everybody hears all about how they need to be using AI, and it's very simple. You know, you just set up your data models and let the tool do its business. Can you share us a little bit more about what those steps to, to kind of get started look like? Yeah, you know, I was uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was at a presentation where they said that it's actually very easy to get started with your AI. And AI is one of my favorite topics. First of all, you know, you don't even know what AI is. AI is, is still a phrase that every time AI becomes something, it changes its name and it's not called AI anymore. No, one's think, no one thinks about Google Maps as AI, but it's actually the most AI driven tool you're probably using in your everyday life along with a lot of other tools, right? Secondly, AI is also something that, you know, will, if it, if it fits the, the purpose that you're trying to do, it will be embedded in the applications and the tools that you're generally using to do this work, right? So it's not like uh, you will have uh, SAP and uh, and uh, Business Central and all these other tools just moving like this, you know, not developing, and then suddenly AI, bam, shows up on, and then they're all, you know, out of business because AI took over everything. They will be embedding AI constantly in their tools. So you won't be able to differentiate between what is AI and what is actually SAP anymore because it will be part of, you know, what you don't know you're actually being AI on. You don't know AI is there when it's there. That's the point, right? Okay, so that was a couple of just, you know, meta considerations about AI. The problem I have with people saying it's easy to do AI is they always go like this, right? So AI is easy. You just need to have your data scientists and uh, and your data engineers, which are, by the way, very expensive people and not like trim on it's very trim on the ground, right? It's not like they walk around everywhere just being like, hey, do you have work for me? You know, uh, it's they're very difficult to get a hold of. And secondly, they always go like, you just need your structured historical data and then some new data structured the same way, and then you're good to go with these data engineers and data scientists. The only problem is, right, having structured historical data is one of the biggest challenges for every organization in the world still today. It was like five years ago, it was 10 years ago, and it still is today. 20 years ago, we started getting uh, some banks and, uh, and insurances started 30, 40 years ago, getting a lot of structured digital data in the systems and the ERP, ERP systems. But we're still seeing that a lot of the data that we have in systems, uh, also after other companies adopted ERPs 20 years ago, 25 years ago, we're still seeing that a lot of the data and a lot of the ways they were you, you worked in these tools were manual. So you had manual analog people sitting there making uh, uh, judgments, typing in things, typing, uh, making typos and names, making weird comments in. So you don't have the structure on the data that you were supposed to have. You can't say that this is how we always treated uh, an invoice from this, this type of client. You don't have that kind of data historically. And you have it also spread across a very, you typically very big, um, array of sources. So you have it in some things you have in your systems, which is op often actually the most structured, but sometimes also unstructured. And then a lot of things you have in other types of data, like you have uh, flat files, you have your Excel files, you have your access databases. Some places they still do that. You have your SharePoints, you have your emails. Email is a terrible thing. It's a digital analog thing, right? It's like paper on your screen. And all of these data are not structured. So just saying that you just need your structured historical data and then you can make a data model and then you can start using AI. It's like saying that, you know, we can easily fix the, the climate change problem at problems. Right? The, the, all we need is a renewable energy source that costs nothing. Then we're done. Then we've done it, right? We fixed it. We just need that. Problem is we don't have that. We don't have this structured data. What does it take to get a lot of structured historical data? It takes years of structured working or structured digital tool tooling on your work. So 
it takes a lot of change management. It takes a lot of process description, like lean and stuff like that that people hate. <laughs> and then you just need to make sure that people work the same way for years before you have enough, you know, uh, knowledge and not enough data to actually make an AI engine that you can trust. Because basically, if you don't have enough of that historical data, you can't trust your AI solution. Does that make sense? It does. And everybody who couldn't see me when I was off the screen, I was smirking to myself as you were getting going and making these <laughs> comments about how easy renewable energy and all the rest of it is. Because like anything in life, once you start peeling back the layers of the onion, it gets more complex. Um, yeah. And so, you know, especially- but complex is not bad. You know? We have a typical tendency to say that everything that's complex is wrong today. We want short statements that can go on Twitter, right? But you can't put AI on Twitter. It's just it doesn't get catched by these 150 characters or whatever you can put there. You know, it's it's more complicated than that. That's also why people have a tendency to say, I'm not gonna get political here, but you know, European Union, oh yeah, I can't I can't really comprehend the complexity of the nations now they vote and everything. So let me just decide if I'm pro or against based on cucumbers or something like that. You know, I like <laughs> that are, hey, they're, they're supposed to be round, not straight. And then that's why I'm against the European Union. And it's just, you know, because it's a complex thing. I even had someone say to me, I don't believe in quantum physics because it sounds complex. It sounds sounds weird, but that doesn't make it untrue. Okay, so complex is also okay, but but you can't, you know, just say it's simple when it's really complex and, and you can't, you know, you have to understand that sometimes times things are just a little bit deeper than that. So, okay. AI isn't as easy as we may make it sound sometimes, especially not developing your own applications. Going back to what you said, you're probably using it in ways that you don't even realize because it's been named something different. Yeah. Um, but there's got to be some use cases that are very easy for us to help explain to people so they can get their brain wrapped around this complex um, so, idea. so what are you asking here? You're asking about the typical use cases for automation. I don't like to just broaden that a little bit out saying the typical use cases for, you know, low code apps, typical use cases for RPA. And, and the question we always get, right? And also because Becatilli is an auditing company and an accounting company is that what are the typical use cases for any kind of digital tool in my accounting? And the issue with that is, you know, I always bring up this Tolstoy quote. I, I do that a lot. So people who've seen me before or talk to me know that I constantly bring up this Tolstoy quote. Uh, it's the opening phrase of Anna Karenina where it says that, you know, every happy family are the same. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. And forgive me if my grammatics were wrong there. But what it says is that, you know, if, if everything's going good, you're all doing, you know, the same well happy and the same way but everyone's unhappiness is is particular it's not generalistic right so the thing that you lack in your your financial you know your accounting department is something that's probably what's giving you your edge in the market what differs your what differentiates you from the rest of your competitors you're doing some you're selling some things that they're not selling because if you were like them it would be in your erp system right it would be something that you would expect an ERP system to do, especially you know, for low-code apps. Be like, oh, what are the typical low-code apps for an, for accounting? Well, an ERP system. And if they don't catch, you know, the the extra functionality that we're lacking, then then you should look at another ERP system because they're failing because this is something everyone does. But but the problem is that a lot of the clients that we're meeting, also especially as an SMB market, doesn't necessarily recognize this. You know that they're that that. They're, they're different. They usually say that, oh, we're so alike. We're just, you know, a small company doing the same things. So they want, you know, you've done this thousand times before. You can just do this for me as well. But really what they're always asking, where they always have their pains, where they're unhappy is their own unhappiness. Does it make sense what I'm trying to say? It does. And I think what you're going towards, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the idea that sometimes the problems we're trying to solve or the areas that we're looking to add efficiency to aren't even even if it's the same idea from company to company there's nuances and things that make each company individual and that's part of what their competitive advantage is yeah because you know you're thinking about ai for instance we would expect as i said these big erp systems to you know in, uh, incorporate ai into their ways of working. So they'll get smarter, smarter, smarter. But where you will need some specific AI that you should not expect of your ERP system is where you are different because there is ERP systems and systems applications, you know, big applications are catch all scenarios. They are the happy family, right? This is the happy family is happy with Business Central, right? That, that's the happy SMB. But the problem is that no one is really just happy. Everyone is unhappy in its own way. That's the point. Everyone's got their own dynamics. All right. Yeah. So one last question for you. So at least, okay, we don't necessarily have these 
straightforward use cases as we would necessarily like to present. And AI and automation isn't necessarily as easy as we were thinking, but at least the, the user adoption side, because we're also used to using technology should be simple, right? Well, the, the, the funny thing is about that technology adoption is, you know, I usually, I always say, and we've been discussing that earlier also, Emma, you and me, that then, you know, how do we start with this? I always say you can start with the tech so you get an idea about what's possible and then make inquiries with the technology. I think that's that's fair, like saying technology is a kind of rule or possibility and then you inquire with that. And then you need to address what kind of, what are people working on, right? So there are different ways of starting it. We can always discuss that, but 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 you don't, you can never come around that, you know, implementing a tool requires a lot of change management. You need people aboard. You need both for your historical data for the AI, I said before, you need people working uh, in a structured way for years before you get something that's actually worth working with. But also if you just implement BI, you need people to start using the BI tool instead of actually doing it in Excel like they used to do. You need to change the ways of working and the way the minds of the people. This this is not just, uh, you know, uh, and, and this is not, you know, the people th side of technology. It's not just about change management on the implementation side, but actually also, and this is something uh, my friend Frank uh, Yeltsin from Danica Pension has mentioned often, is that if you attach just another tool you just go too crazy just add tools 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 then you'll have a a very what do you call trim knowledge about how to work each tool you'll be very you know superficial on each tool you might have seven people working 15 tools whereas you say okay i'm not gonna go uh you know that differentiated on my tools i'm just gonna have a pa tool and maybe a low code apps tool one of each right and then i know i'm doing things with rpa that should be done with an ipass or a different solution but i've chosen this one because then i'll get really really proficient in that and really good at working that and then you have a depth where you can actually change things around instead of you know spreading your your knowledge and your skills over a wide array of, of tool sets. So there's the, the, there's both the people in in technology that you need to to think about. How do we make sure we can cover the things that we want to cover? And then also the 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 people in 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 the departments that you're implementing in, making sure they have both the time to give you proper directions about what you're supposed to do with the tool, and what they want fixed, because they know that. Get, make, get, make sure they have the time to do testing. That's the second thing, you know. People are always like, oh, can we have this tool? We know you can do it. And I'll be like, yeah, I can do it. But do you really have the time to tell me and do you really have the time to test it and then second finally do you have time to train your whole 40 people department in how to use it because if you don't know how to use it they will not adopt it if you don't see how it's smart if they're not aboard from the beginning either they will definitely not use it right so it, 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 technology is only as good as as the people using it then we see that everywhere we also saw you know uh, Microsoft, you know, made uh, back in the days they made all these, and Google also made. I think Google Wave was it. Microsoft tried to go social tons of times, and it was cool technologies they did, right? But if no one adopted it, they were worth nothing. <laughs> but but Facebook came in and was like, oh, we're just doing. He just did this for his was it high school or college, and everyone just adopted it because it was it was what they wanted. So it's all about what do people want? How can I get them to want it? And and you know those logics for you know digital uh, media is the same for digitalization. You need to make sure you're producing the tools that people want, people can adapt to, and then they can start working on. Okay, so maybe it isn't as as simple as we can make it seem when we have these conversations on a regular basis. But I no, but we want to say it's simple, right? Everyone wants to say it's simple because everyone has these 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 broken processes with some digital stuff, right? And and uh, I say you know my best advice is always to you know follow the data. I've said that tons of times. But if you follow the data and you see that this is the data stream, I'm basically taking data from here, putting it here, and thinking something around it. Most people will be like quite okay with the change management around that. So that's where you can easily fix it, right? But if you want to, you know, say you should now work in this tool instead of this complete tool, then you really need to consider that you might be looking at half a year at least of implementation or more, depending on the size of your organization. You can't just, you know, put out a tool and say, let's hope it works, you know, let's just close our eyes and see what goes, right? Yep. And that's what I think truly important is setting the right expectations, knowing you need to bring people along on the journey and not expecting to flip a switch and suddenly be transformed. And so, you know, we talk about this kind of stuff on LinkedIn and in these other videos on a regular basis. There's some things that you can do to make yourself successful, but you have to go into it with your eyes open. Yeah, but also, you know, take a, take this good example. I think I think would be, I, 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 I'm not gonna, you know, judge all of it, but when you do process mining that everyone's also doing, right? And talking about process mining can help you get quick wins on your automation and digitalization. But what process mining is doing is giving you how it, things have been worked on 
for the last half year. But what if it the, the way it's been working out has not been structured and you could structure it better so you could catch more? What if people could say we could actually do it in a smarter way if they knew about the technologies that you're having? So maybe maybe automating on the as is is not the right automation. Digitalization is not necessarily just you know best practices on what we're doing now, but should maybe be aiming for a leading practice. And how do we get to that without involving the people that are working on it today? So you know this differentiation also by between you know best practice and leading practice is, is a really big thing about this. You have to consider how do we transform our company in the right way, uh, and that just involves you know you know all about this, right? You know stakeholder involvement, you know key executive involvement, stuff that stuff like that, you know, and also SME involvement. And then it requires technology. Make the inquiry with technology, but then make sure to involve people on top level and the bottom in the beginning before you start implementing, right? I have a plan for you know change management. To, testing all of that. You're speaking my language. I'm all about the people. So I've got plenty of other videos that people can go watch. I'm actually all about the that. tech in some way, because I think, you know, sometimes asking the right questions is the most, most important, right? But the answer, you cannot answer any question without the people. And that, that, I think that's what I'm trying to say. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining me and for sharing your thoughts on this and also inspiring the video with your hashtag. It's simple, stupid. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> it makes me, right. always, <laughs> me smile when we talk about the industry. Um, for anybody that isn't already following you, I would encourage them to jump over to your LinkedIn. We'll make sure that you're tagged in the post. Um, but thank you again so much for your time and have a wonderful day, everybody. If you're looking for expert tips on how to get started with your transformation or looking to hone in on your approach, make sure that you subscribe to our channel to catch our weekly digital transformation talk series where we interview experts from around the world on how to make it happen.